Hope everyone's doing well this morning. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah, I was, uh, you probably noticed me sitting down during worship. That was because I like messed up my back this morning when I was like coming, about to leave to, uh, leave to come here. So, you know, I might sit down again. <laughs> Just to let you guys know. Uh, but yeah, so just keep me in prayer. I just knocked over something, I think. All right. I hate sitting down, though. I don't think, I, I don't think I'm going to like this at all. Uh, <laughs> um, let's pray. Dear Lord, we just come before you. We give you praise and honor. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you for your uh, strength, Lord, your mercy. Lord, that you give us every day. And Lord, I just, uh, just come before you, Lord, right now and just be here. Lord, speak, Lord God. Move, Lord, in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, hope everyone's doing well. I know I said that already, but, you know, I have to say it again, apparently. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I just, yeah, I think this is better than sitting down. Um, God is good. God is good. So we've been reading through uh, the book of De Deuteronomy, right, together. And uh, today I want to uh, teach out of uh, Deuteronomy 19. Wow. Because, like, Deuteronomy is such a good book, and, and uh, it's just so powerful in the different things that the Lord shows us uh, in it. And so uh, why don't you turn with me to Deuteronomy 19, and um, I'm going to read the first 13 verses. And I'm going to share some other verses throughout the, throughout, the, um, throughout the teaching as well, but you don't have to turn to all of them. I just, you know, I don't even think I pulled up all of them because there are so many of them, you know. But uh, why, don't you read, why don't we read together, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. When the Lord your God cuts off the nations who, whose land the Lord your God has, is giving you, and you, dis, you dispo, dispossess them and dwell in their cities in their house, and in their houses, you shall set apart three cities for yourselves in the land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess. <clears throat> you, shall, you shall measure the distances and divide into three parts the area of the land that the Lord your God gives you as a possession so that any uh, manslayer can flee to them. This is, our, this is the provision for the manslayer, who, is by, is, who by fleeing there may save his life. If anyone kills his neighbor unintentionally without having hated him in the past, as when someone goes into the forest with his neighbor to cut wood and his hand swings and the ax to cut, swings the ax to cut down a tree and the, and the head slips from the handle and strikes his neighbor so that he dies, he may flee to one of these cities and, um, and live. Lest the avenger of blood and hot, anger, and, and hot anger pursue the manslayer and overtake him, because the way is long and, this, and strike him fatally, though the man did not deserve to die, since he had not hated his neighbor in the past. Therefore, I command you, you shall set apart three cities, and if the Lord your God enlarges your territory, as he has sworn to your fathers, and gives you all the land that he has promised uh, to give your fathers, uh, provided you are careful to keep all his commandments, which I command you today, by loving the Lord your God, by walking ever in his ways, then you shall add th uh, three other cities to these three, lest innocent blood be shed in your land that the Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance, and so the guilt of the bloodshed be upon you. But if anyone hates his neighbor and lies in wait for him and attacks him and strikes him fatally so that he dies and he flees into one of these cities, then the elders of the city shall send and take him uh, from there and hand him over to the avenger of blood so that he may die. Your eye shall not uh, pity him, but you shall purge the guilt of innocent, of innocent blood from Israel so that it may be well with you. Amen. <clears throat> That was long, right? <laughs> but it was good, though. It's good. It's interesting stuff because it, it tells you that, you know, there's these uh, God set up these cities for as safe, safe havens, basically, as, as cities of refuge um, for uh, the people of Israel. And, and here we are. Sorry. 
halfway through, you know, 2022, and sometimes, you know, I don't know what to think sometimes. You know, we're still dealing with COVID, right? Um, there, there are mass shootings, you know, supply chain shortages, right? You know, uh, rising interest rates, uh, rising gas prices. You know, yesterday we went to get gas in New Jersey. We were in New, over in New Jersey and it cost us like $93 to get fill up our tank. And I'm like, what? This, this is ridiculous. Um, rising food prices, you know, rising health issues. You know, our nation's health, uh, na our nation's mental health is at a dangerously, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, the health issues and in, in, there are dangerously high uh, levels, you know. Um, the mental health is like, you know, is, is pretty bad you know, in our nation, you know, fear and, and, and isolation have taken their toll, you know, and, and, and such a whole, it's taken a, such a hold on our society that people are living more in a state of hopelessness. They're living in hopelessness than in a state of hope. You know, and to top it off, we as a nation are more divided than ever, right? We're more divided than ever. Politics and social issues and economics and gun control and vaccines and masks and I, I mean the list can go on and on and on you know uh, there there exists a divide that's causing even more hurt and isolation in our in our in our body in, in this nation you know in the church even so what do we do where can we go you know where can we go to find refuge you know in the midst of the storm you know, we find ourselves in. Where can we go? You know, the Apostle Paul tells us uh, something that extremely, that's extremely helpful uh, in times like this. You know, to the church in Rome, right, he said in Romans 15, 4, he says, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the, the endurance taught in the scriptures and the, and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope, Right? Everything is written for a reason, you know, so that we might have hope. You know, about what happened to the children of Israel, he said, um, you know, these things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the accumulation of the ages has come. And that's in 1 Corinthians uh, 10, 11. You know, and so in our current situation, you know, to whatever situation that we might find ourselves in, God has a special place for us to hold on to. You know, as we're, you know, told of our place of refuge, you know, where, where we can go, he has a special place for us, you know, a, a place of refuge where we can go to find grace and mercy in our time of need. You know, and that is, that's in the throne room of God. That's in the throne room of God. You know, our refuge isn't really a place, but it's a person, right? And that person is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our refuge. You know, in order to understand just how Jesus is our refuge, you know, is to understand what God did when he set up cities of refuge, when, you know, the Israelites entered into the promised land. You know, in order to keep, you know, his people safe from injustice, God required Moses to set up six cities out of the 48 given to the Levites, you know, as places of asylum or, or refuge for those who have been accused of manslaughter. You know, that they may have a... Uh, they may be, that they may be legally protected. They can be legally protected from those who are, are wishing to avenge, you know, the victim of, of, uh, of, of the murder, right? It, and, you know, and so until they, you know, they, there could be a place of, of safety they can go until there was like a trial, you know, or where their guilt is, uh, is or innocence is established, right? And this is where the verses I quoted from, you know, Apostle Paul come into play. These cities of refuge has a modern equivalent, and that, and that equivalent is Jesus Christ, right? So the cities of refuge are, are, are a type of Christ, you know, in whom sinners can find refuge from the destroyer of their souls. Sorry if I'm moving around a lot. <laughs> Just bear with me, please. Um, uh, yeah, so they, could, they, they, can, they can find refuge from the destroyer, the destroyer of their souls, the avenger of blood, that, and that is Satan, right? You know, we as sinners, we can find our refuge in Jesus Christ. So just as a guilty person, whether it was intentional or not, right, sought refuge in the cities set up for that purpose. So, it was, so, so 
so it is that we, we flee to Christ as a refuge from sin. That's what we do. And the writer of Hebrews says that we can have this assurance that we can flee and find refuge in Jesus to take hold of the hope that is then set before us. That's what he says in, in, in Hebrews 6, 18. No, we run to Christ to escape the danger we are in from the curse and condemnation uh, uh, of the law and from the wrath of God. No, which is, an, which is an eternity in hell. Only Christ provides refuge from these things. And it is, it is to him alone that we must run. We must run to him alone. Now, just as these cities of refuge were, were open to all who fled to them for safety, it is Christ who provides safety for all who come to him for refuge from, from sin and its punishment. You know, Satan, the accuser, you know, is, the, is the avenger that is out for blood. You know, he's out for our blood and he's out, of, and he's out for every single one of us. But the person who forsakes sin and seeks righteousness stands securely sheltered by the atoning blood of Christ. That's what he does. If we come to Christ, we are securely sheltered by his blood. You know, Solomon, who himself was, you know, no saint. He was no saint at all, right? Understood this when he wrote in Proverbs 18, you know, Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18, he said, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. King David knew that dwelling in God was the only refuge. It was his only refuge. When he said in Psalm 91, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. That's what David said in Psalm 91. You know, the cities of refuge can then be viewed as a foreshadow of God's plan for our salvation through Jesus Christ. But, you know, but how do these cities, you know, resemble Jesus as our refuge, right? So there are, na there are six cities. And, um, and, you know, what I found interesting is how each of these names speak to a particular feature or character of God. And then of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. But when they all put together, they will reveal how sufficient God is, how sufficient Jesus Christ is in providing, in providing that refuge to meet the need of our day, right? We think that we're on our own, but we're not. So let me take a, let's take a look at, you know, the names, in their, the names of these cities and their meanings, and then how they resemble and speak of Jesus in our, as our place of refuge, all right? So one city, Kadesh, right? In the Hebrew language means holy, you know, to sanctify or, to, or, or sanctification, has, has come to mean something or some place that has been set apart, you know, for a specific purpose or plan, which always means that, you know, uh, that, that it's been set apart for God, right? You know, now the Bible speaks of God not only being holy, but his name is holy, you know, of, of the Lord, you know, you know, it, I love what, what it says in, in, in Psalm 91. It says, you know, I've written just what I said earlier is that like, he's my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. But here's where it gets really interesting, right? When speaking of the, of, of the coming Messiah, the Lord called him by his holy name, Jehovah. And part of the holy name is, is the name righteousness, right? And so in, in Jeremiah 23, it says, these days are coming, declares the Lord, you know, when I will raise up for David, raise up, raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called the Lord, our righteous savior. And Jesus being our righteousness, you know, and Jesus is our righteousness, right? And Paul said, you know, in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, he says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that we, that we might become the righteousness of God. So righteousness, you know, Kadesh is a sanctuary, a refuge, a place of rest. 
You know, it was a place that a person was safe from fear, guilt, and punishment. You could say, you could say like this, these cities of refuge are, are, are places where a person can be redeemed and made righteous once again. We can become redeemed and righteous once again. Now look at what, how Jesus describes himself, right? Jesus describes himself. He says, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That's what Jesus says about himself. And so Jesus is our Kadesh, the Holy One, and our sanctuary and place of rest and refuge through storms we face in this life. That's who Jesus is. Another city, Shechem. The word Shechem in Hebrew language means shoulder uh, and was considered a place of strength and safety, right? And his name uh, is, is then a beautiful picture, right? This name is, is a beautiful picture of the Messiah and his purpose is spelled out in, within the Old Testament, right? You know, uh, I, the prophet Isaiah said, you know, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, you know, and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Then later, you know, spelling out the mission of the Messiah to suffer and die for our sins. You know, Isaiah says that this is com this of the coming, he says this of the coming Messiah. He says, surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. His weight, our weight, our sin was on his shoulders. Jesus gives us a, uh, a, 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 the same idea of himself, you know, being our Shechem saying, you know, I will give eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. We're safe. We're there. You know, Jesus has us. You know, um, we can lean on him, right? And so Jesus as our Shechem is our strength and and. and in security, you know, you know, in these, in these troubled times that we find ourselves in. That's who he is. So another city is called Hebron, right? And Hebron in Hebrew is a Hebrew word for friend. It has come to, to mean to have an alliance or a fellowship, right? When considering Hebron as a city of refuge, uh, you know, you know, this is what the Lord is, you know, basically laid on my heart. He says, you know, the city of Hebron is a city of refuge, right? And we both, we, have, we find both fellowship and friendship with God. But even more, we have fled, like, you know, we flee to, fled, flee to the city. You know, we not only find refuge, you know, uh, uh, you know, we find refuge not to be, to, to be judged not guilty, right? You know, and forgiven, but there's something more in this place. You know, we find that we have friendship and fellowship, you know, with everyone else who's dwelling there as well. You see, every, everyone has fortified his or own, his, his, his or her, had, sorry, everyone has forfeited, right? We've all forfeited, you know, our fellowship and our friendship with God because of sin. But Jesus, our true Hebron, right, has reconciled us back to God. In Ephesians 2.13, you know, Paul said, you know, but now Christ Jesus, you know, who, who once, but now in Christ Jesus, you were once far away and have been brought near by the blood of Christ. We were far away from God, but because of Jesus and his blood, we've been brought near. And, then, and it's, it's with this understanding that we have fellowship with God. We have fellowship with God. So another, another city, Bezer, 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 yeah, it's B-E-Z-E-R, right? So I'll say Bezer, right? Or Bezer, Bezer, Bezer. All right, the word Bezer <laughs> comes from the word meaning fortified enclosure, right? And, and it also means a stronghold or a fortress. You know, that's a, it's a fortified place. That's what it means. And that's, that's an awesome description of the Lord, right? That's an awesome description of the Lord. He's our strong tower. You know, Proverbs 18, you know, it says the name of the Lord is a strong tower, right? He's a strong tower. The, run, the righteous run to it and, they're, and we're safe. 
You know, Psalm 18, it says, The Lord is my rock and my fortress, my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust, my shield and my horn of salvation, my stronghold. That's who Jesus is. That's who Jesus is. Christ is our Bezer. And, and I love the way the Apostle Paul brings out uh, this in a letter to, to the Colossians, right? You know, And it goes, like, since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden in Christ. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. It's awesome stuff. In the times we're in, Jesus is our bezer. He's our strong tower, you know, a place of strength that we can run to and find refuge and safety. Um, in another city is called Ramoth, Ramoth, Ramoth. You know, Ramoth, uh, you know, means high and exalted or, high, or, or heights. You know, the city's a refuge. Um, uh, you know, it would be, you know, especially applied to Ramoth, right? Uh, it, where is said that, you know, to have been built on some raised place so that it would be visible from all who needed to flee to them, right? So they're higher than, than the regular cities, I guess, you know, and people could see where they are so they can flee to those cities, you know, and they can, and, you know, and they would know how, how much further they had to go to, in order to get to that, to that place, that, that city of refuge, you know, and it's a great picture of Christ, right? The analogy can be seen that, you know, in what he said in, in uh, what, what Jesus said to Nicodemus, right? And he says in John 3, 14 and 15, he says, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes, you know, may, be, may have eternal life in him. You know, and Paul goes on to say as well in Philippians 2, 19, 2, 2 9 through 11, he says, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place, and gave him the name that is above every name, that in the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and earth and under the earth. Every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. So everyone who feels despised or rejected can, can, can know that they are raised with, in, raised they're in, in Christ and be raised and they'll be raised with him. Amen. You know, you know, King David in Psalm 40 says, you know, he lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire, set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. One of my favorite songs, by the way, like, you know, by you too. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but uh, that's what, that's, uh, that's powerful. He lifts us up out of the mire in the slimy pit and the muck and he sets us on a rock a firm a solid place that's what he does and paul goes on he says you know god raised us up you know together and made us sit together in heavenly places in christ jesus how awesome is that you know so as our ramos Jesus is above and greater than all that can come against us. He's above and greater than all of it. And so to him, we, so we, could, we must run to him, right? We need to run to him to find help in our time of need. You know? And the last one is Golan. Golan, G-O-L-A-N. It means refuge. But also has the idea within it, um, the idea of rejoicing, you know, and that is, you know, in their captivity, they rejoice or have joy in the Lord, you know, as their refuge. You know, David said in Psalm 60, 16, it says, you know, you will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. It's pretty cool that Jesus is our Golan, you know, and that he's our chief joy. He's our joy. 
You know, there's nothing that can give us his fullness of joy. Nothing. We try to find it other places, but we can't find it. We can't find joy anywhere else. You know, Jesus said, you know, these things I've spoken to you, that my joy may remain in you and your joy may be full. It's John 15, 11. This fullness of joy we can experience when we pass from this life into eternity as believers. Amen? When we stand before Jesus and he says, you know, well done, you know, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Awesome stuff. It's awesome stuff. So Jesus is our goal on. You know, in, in Jude, it says, uh, it said, Paul wrote, he says, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and, pre- and to present you faultless before the, pre- uh, the presence of his holy, uh, it, to, of his glory with exceeding joy. Jesus is our joy. And so with these names, we can, we, can, we can see that, you know, that Jesus is the Holy One, right? He's our Holy One, our Kadesh. The one who redeems, you know, he takes upon him, as he takes upon himself the sins of the world, or Shechem, right? And because of that, we can now have fellowship with God, you know, Hebron. And, but even more, he's our stronghold, our strong tower um, in our time of need, our Bezer. And he's greater than that, he's greater than what can come against us, right? A, a, a ram of that whoever believes in him will have joy, have the joy of eternal life, our goal on. And so, hopefully, we can see, you know, how these names of these cities of refuge are, are are a beautiful picture, you know, of not only you know the character of God, but also how Jesus so perfectly is our place of refuge. One in whom we can run to, you know, in our time of, of, of need to find uh, uh, refuge and safety, right? We may look other places. We might look other places. But Jesus is our true refuge. He's our true refuge. You know, when John the Baptist saw Jesus, he proclaimed, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He's more like, behold, more like that. You know, the Lamb of God, he, he yelled it out to everybody. I think, I think John the Baptist probably yelled a lot because they didn't have microphones and stuff back then. But, um, but I'm glad I have one today because my throat is like, yeah. But, you know, but also Apostle Paul says, you know, Christ has a, redeemed us uh, from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. As it is written, curses everyone who hangs on a tree. And that's uh, actually Deuteronomy 20, I think it is, right? Or 21? I think that's, yeah, right around there. So it's like, you know, so, so Jesus, as a sacrificial lamb, as the lamb of God, he took upon himself uh, our sins and died upon the cross, you know, to set us free from the, from the law of sin and death. And he is now at the right hand of the Father, forever making intercessions for us that, you know, uh, that Satan, the avenger of blood, you know, cannot make an accusation against us. Uh, he can't make them stick, right? For we are, now found, we are now found not guilty in Christ. Amen? You know, therefore, you know, and there is, it's clearly written in, in uh, it's clear, clearly in view, right? The writer of Hebrews tells us, you know, of Jesus as our sure refuge, right? And in, in Hebrews 6, um, 18 to 20, he says, God did this so that by two, by two unchangeable things in which is impossible for God to lie, right? Impossible for God to lie. We have, we, <clears throat> we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul firm and secure. It enters this, the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. He has to become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. It's awesome stuff. Amazing stuff. He is our refuge. 
And, the, and this is what we come to, and you know, you know I'm going to end soon, all right? <laughs> so, uh, but the cities of refuge, you know, resemble Jesus, you know, as Jesus becomes our high priest, right? He's our high priest. You know, in, the, in, in those times of um, uh, the cities of refuge, people would, could go to the, the city and stay there, if I'm, remembering this, if I'm remembering this correctly, I'm not sure. But uh, um, they can stay there, and if they leave, if they, found, if they find protection there, they, if they leave, then they can get killed, right? They can, the person can get them. Um, and if they stay there, as long as the high priest was alive, was still alive, then they would find their re they would still find their refuge there. But if the high priest died, then they could leave, and they would still find they're, they're still good to go, right? This, if I'm remembering that correctly, I think I'm remembering that remembering that correctly. But yeah, so so which is like interesting. But Jesus is our high priest; he's unchanging, and he's not going anywhere, right? So we always have protection because of him, you know. It, 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 Jesus not only rescues us, but he's a refuge in our times of, of temptation, right? You see, Jesus is our, is our perfect refuge because he understands what we go through. Going through it himself, you know, when he was in the wilderness, he was tempted by Satan, you know, and, you know, he never, he never succumbed to it. He never uh, uh, gave in to that temptation, always quoting the word of God to Satan, you know, until Satan left him alone. You know, so he's our perfect refuge. You know, when we face adversity, right, when it seems like everything and everyone, you know, forsakes us. You know, when, when the world is directly opposed and, uh, and unfavorable to us, right? You know, when, when, when uh, everything seems to be against us, and all the worldly resources that we have are, are no longer at our disposal. You know, Jesus is always there to rescue us and be our refuge. You know, you see, we're not alone. We're not alone. We are not alone. Jesus is always with us. And in these times of adversity, should not take us by surprise. You know, instead, we should approach them with the knowledge that Jesus has overcome in making us overcomers with him. We're overcomers with him. You know, I was at a, I was at a men's re, uh, retreat a few weeks ago. And uh, one of the teachings I was there, and Pablo was there, and uh, uh, Jose and Pablo's dad and some other guys that we know. And um, uh, the, one of the teachings was about, for the title basically, basically the thing, it was about how we, we fight and how we fight. We don't fight for victory. We fight from victory because Jesus already won the battle. And we were walking in that instead of, you know, so yeah, but I thought that was like, you know, we're overcomers with him. Jesus has overcome already. He's already won the battle. And so that's how, that's how we should live as well. You know, when we face affliction, you know, it's times when, you know, uh, our health has been exchanged for sickness, right? Having issues today. And, you know, our strength has, it, it, our strength exchanged for, for weakness, you know, when our joy has been exchanged for sadness and when our heart and our flesh fail us, you know, my back is failing me right now. But other than that, you know, I'm good. You know, it's okay. You know, that, that Jesus comes in and rescues us and is our refuge, right? That's who he is. And in his ministry uh, here on earth, Jesus went all about healing, you know, all, all around, right? Healing people. Not only their physical ailments, but emotionally and, and spiritually as well. You know, the, one of my favorite uh, uh, parts of the, of the New Testament, Jesus is going around and he comes up to a leper. And the leper is like crying out to him. He says, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus just puts forth his hand, you know, and leans down and, and, and touches him. He says, I'm willing. He's willing. It's awesome stuff. He's an amazing, amazing Lord, amazing Savior, amazing God. 
You know, and, and so Jesus is not only, only, he not only rescues us from, but he also, he's also a refuge uh, to us in times of temptation, adversity, and affliction. But, we, you know, you know, but he's also, um, he's omnipotent, right? Jesus is our absolute, you know, without question, refuge. He's God Almighty. He's all powerful. He's our all powerful refuge, right? You know, when we look at these, when, when looking for a city of refuge, right? This aspect of Jesus as our, our refuge comes in two parts, right? First, he's, he's near, right? You know, he's, he's powerful. He's there. He's our stronghold, you know, but he's also everywhere, right? <laughs> you know, first, he, he's, he's always near. He's never far away. Just as each city of refuge has, has no more than a day away from uh, for anyone to reach, there should be a, you know all these cities were only only a day away. You know Jesus, you know the Apostle Paul says that you know but now in Christ Jesus you were once far off. We were once far off, but we've been brought near by the blood of Christ. We've been brought near, you know, and this you know. And they were easily accessible, right? He's everywhere, and he's accessible to us. But Jesus is not only he's not only near us, but he's also open to receive our prayers, you know, and give us rest. He's there for us, and also Jesus is unchanging. He's unchanging, you know, and because he does not change. Jesus is our eternal refuge. He's always there for us. You know, the Lord proclaimed through uh, the prophet Malachi, you know, I am the Lord. I do not change. That's what he says. I'm the Lord. I do not change. And it is this unchangeable nature of, of, of God that is clearly present in Jesus. You know, as the writer of Hebrews says, you know, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same, unchanging, you know, and so it, as that sure refuge in times of trouble, Jesus is our omnipotent, omnipresent, and unchanging refuge we can turn to, that we can run to, no matter what, you know, in Jesus we have a city. Uh, a refuge which is uh, to which we are encouraged to flee to uh, for protection from Satan, who's after our very soul. Therefore, we can there can't be a delay. We can't wait, right? We can't wait in seeking after Jesus. We can't wait in seeking after the Lord, so that we can we can have our strong, you know, uh, have the, the strong consolation that that the writer tells us, you know, about having fled to Jesus and laying hold of the hope that He has for us. He has such hope for us, and the hope of for, and, and hope for forgiveness, you know, and to hear, you know, well done, good and faithful servant, come into the joy of your Lord. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we just come before you. We thank you for who you are, Lord. We thank you that you are our refuge, our strength, Lord, our, our hope, our, our everything, Lord God. Lord, and a lot of times we, we try to lean on our own understanding. We try to do things our own way, try to um, um, we'll just go about life, Lord, on our own, not seeking you, Lord God. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that we as a people, Lord, we as um, believers, Lord, in you, Lord, return to you, Lord, and not, into, not to our own ways. Not to do things, Lord, that we find right in our own eyes, Lord God, but um, what's right in your eyes. Lord, to, to not do things, Lord, that, um, Lord, that uh, turn us, Lord, or turn others away from you, Lord God. But that we do things, Lord, and we that we run to you, Lord, in the midst of the struggle, Lord, in the midst of the pain, in the midst of of anything, Lord, that's going on that we're going through. So I just pray, Lord, you would just um, continue to open our eyes, Lord God, 
so that we can see that you are our refuge, Lord. You are our strong tower. You are our hope. Lord, in your unchanging love for us, Lord God, we may draw us nearer, and nearer to you, Lord, every day. In Jesus' name, amen.